Thank you. Please remain standing. Chaplain Curtis Adams, please come forward from the Beckley VAMC, will lead us in the invocation. Good evening. Do you bow your heads? Thank you, God, for this another day. As we gather together for this groundbreaking ceremony, Lord, we ask that you continue to bless this ground, Lord, for the people that it will serve, Lord, and the many veterans that will see these lands, Lord. We ask for a special blessing, a special prayer, Lord, over not just this ceremony, Lord, but over the future of this land that it be used for the betterment of your people. It's in the mighty and matchless name of Jesus that we pray. Amen. Amen. Please remain standing. Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Please be seated. Aretha Van Horn, please. Apologies, could we stand again for the national anthem? <laughs> oh, say, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight? last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket red glare the bombs bursting That our flag was still there. Oh, say, does that star spangled banner yet wave for the land of the free and the home of the Kidding. This, this has been a many years journey, a many years journey for this department and for the state and for veterans. Federal funding, um, no offense to anyone that works for the feds, is a tedious, tiresome proposition. And anyone who has, has dealt with this, it's, it's necessary, but it's, but it's a tough road. And we have been traveling this project for a while and we are delighted that this breaking of ground today is coming to fruition. When I came to the West Virginia Department of Veterans Assistance in early 2016, one of the first things I heard was uh, it was veterans telling us, what, where's, where's, what can we do? Can we get a facility in Southern West Virginia? Can we get a nursing facility? We've got a great one in Clarksburg. We need one down here. And I heard it over and over and over but I also heard something else from veterans. No one's listening. Uh, they, they hear us, we say it, but no one, seems to, uh, no one seems to be doing anything about it. But then, uh, even then, when, uh, when veterans felt no one was listening, soon to be Governor Jim Justice was listening. As a result, when the governor was, uh, came in and established a gentleman by the name of Dennis Davis, the late Dennis Davis, as cabinet secretary of our department. Cabinet Secretary Davis made this facility a priority. During the first term, he set 
all of the, we, we met and said all of the various motions that needed to happen into, into, construct, in, into uh, action toward construction. And uh, this facility was a priority. We planned, and through the help of Governor Justice, there was money that was placed into, uh, into the line item that needed to be placed for construction of this facility. Then COVID hit. Uh, we all recall COVID was, a, COVID was a tough year. It hit us in all different directions, but it also hit us in a, in a practical place as far as construction of a new nursing facility, which is, as he stated, prices went up. So we had to replan, readjust, uh, redo where we were going. And there was a decision that had to be made. There was a determination, okay, with, with prices up, was this facility still a priority to West Virginia? And to Governor Jim Justice, the answer was yes. Yes, it was still a priority. Uh, the governor put forth a budget that would be suitable and suitable to build a good facility here. And the legis a brought it to the legislature. The legislature said resoundingly yes, and we have a facility on the way. <coughs> there was a, uh, during this time from a, from a practical standpoint, there was a, uh, there were two other pieces that needed to happen. We need to land and the governor also helped with this and put us, uh, put us together with the Department of Agriculture, Commissioner Kent Leonard, and this piece of property, which uh, had been in the hands of other agencies, was in the hands of agriculture. It, uh, it came to us in this beautiful place, this place on, on, on a vista where we look and we, we can see what's going to happen eventually. This came our way. So we had the land, which was required. We had the money in place, which was required. There was a personnel and personal final piece of the puzzle that, that did take place. Um, during, uh, during his time as cabinet secretary, Secretary Davis was having conversations with a gentleman in Washington. Uh, the gentleman in Washington worked. Uh, he, was a, he was a manager and a high level manager. Uh, with the U.S. Department, uh, Department of Veterans Affairs, and the gentleman was Ted Diaz. Mr. Diaz was a decorated U.S. Navy veteran. He was also a corpsman. He was also the son of a, of a Mexican immigrant who became a surgeon in the United States. He became a West Virginia surgeon. So Ted Diaz's father, the West Virginia surgeon, Huntington was his home and he wanted to come home. Now Secretary Diaz, we welcome here and we're delighted who is with us. And I gotta tell you uh, in introducing Secretary Diaz, the first meeting that I had with Secretary Diaz, his question to me was, how is the facility, how's the nursing facility going in Beckley? That's something that's going to be a priority. My answer to him was, Mr. Secretary, we're delighted that that is your priority. We're happy. I have a second piece of good news. We're in luck because the governor and I believe the legislature, they have our backs. So today we're gonna to be shoveling dirt and I'd like to introduce you to our cabinet secretary who will in turn introduce you to the governor, Secretary Ted Diaz. <laughs> Good afternoon, Governor Justice, my fellow veterans, distinguished guests. Thank you all for being here today. I'm both honored and humbled to stand before you today. Throughout our nation's history, our military has defended freedom and liberty, participated in wars and countless conflicts across the globe. Every time our nation has been called upon our military and our veterans, they have answered. West Virginia remains one of the most patriotic states in the nation. Roughly one in nine in our, states, in our state are veterans. 
This is much higher than the national average. Myself and more than 135,000 of my brother and sister veterans call this state home. Of these, over 10,000 are women. 75% are over the age of 50. About 4% are World War II veterans. 10% are Korean War veterans. 35% are Vietnam War veterans and 30% are Gulf War veterans. West Virginians have proven time and time again that we will always be there when our nation calls. And in return, our state stands committed to care for our veterans. This veterans nursing facility has been a long time coming. Several years ago, Governor Justice Cabinet Secretary Dennis Davis, my predecessor and my dear friend, started us on this journey. So much planning has gone into the design of this facility. We've consulted with nurses and other medical professionals. We've consulted with the top architecture and engineering firms, telling them what our veterans want, what our veterans need, and above all else, we emphasize our veterans want a facility that they can truly call home. Today, we break ground on a facility that utilizes modern approach in long-term skilled care. It's called a small home model. This 150,000 square foot facility will include 120 beds, Divide it up into four neighborhoods with two pods in each neighborhood, which will house 30 residents each. They will be monitored by nurses in not what you typically think of as a nurse's station. It's going to be called a home base. These are located in each pod. And what it does, it gives easier access and the nurses can see and be seen much easier. In each pod, each neighborhood, you will find living and activities area, kitchen and dining area, on-site laundry facilities, a sunroom, a den, private, and each resident has a private residence in their own private bathrooms. Throughout the facility, you will see an activities room, a PT room, a gallery, a library, a canteen, a living room, a game room, a multi-purpose room, a chapel, and our facility will have a dedicated dementia and Alzheimer's wing. Not only will it be a world-class skilled care facility, it'll also truly, truly feel like home. Thanks to the efforts of Governor Justice, our legislature, and the tireless efforts of the staff at the West Virginia Department of Veterans Assistance, we stand here before you today, shovels at the ready to show that our veterans have earned our deepest gratitude for their service and sacrifice to our country. Today, the city of Beckley, the state of West Virginia, and a grateful nation stand united, united in honoring our veterans, honoring their families, and honoring their service. With that, ladies and gentlemen, I now have the distinct honor of introducing the 36th governor of the great state of West Virginia, the Honorable Jim Justice.
Oh, Mr. Secretary, thank you, sir. And thanks all y'all for coming. I can see we've got a lot of dignitaries here, our commissioners, senators, I'm sure delegates. Let me just say just this, and I'll be short and sweet. You know, this is sacred ground to me in many ways. You know, so many events from this incredible institution right out the road to all the kids that have played so many baseball games right below us. Literally, this couldn't be, there could not be a better place for this incredible facility. Now just think for just one second, and you've heard me say this 10,000 times over. And on this incredible day, at a time of year that absolutely West Virginians cherish beyond belief. But this time of year, normally it's pretty dead gum chilly. Now just think about it. Could it just be, again, a coincidence, an everyday occurrence in which God chooses to remain anonymous? He gave us this day for a reason in a lot, a lot of ways. Just think of what is going on all across, this, all across the globe right now. You've got little 18-year-olds that may be eating out of a can and somebody may be shooting at them and they may be hiding behind a rock right now. And just maybe, just maybe, we'll lose somebody. And then a Gold Star family will be celebrating their life, but absolutely asking all of us to never forget them. Do you not realize in every way that we owe every single thing we have, everything, to our active military, to those we've lost, and to absolutely our veterans in every single way? You can't imagine this. If you're the governor, everybody's asking for something all the time. All the time. But do you know, and I've said it 10 million times over, I can give you so many examples, you know, of how little, little veterans ask for considering how much they've given. If we don't step up and for God's sakes of living, we've been at this now for too long. I've screamed until I can't scream anymore. But today we're here. And today God has given us this incredible, incredible day. We're going to celebrate not only this incredible facility, this 120-bed facility, and going to do everything in the world that we can possibly do to make things just one step better. For those that have absolutely, again, given every one of you and me our life, every last one of us. So with all that being said, we're going to celebrate a man, a general, a general that, now it may have changed since 2021, but a general that was the, the highest ranking. African-American man or woman that was given or, or presented, you know, being was the recipient of the Medal of Honor. Can you just imagine, can you imagine the absolute courage that it would really take to be able to be a recipient, a recipient of the Medal of Honor? Gosh, it's, it's unthinkable how blessed and how much gratitude we owe all those folks. So with all that being said, I want you guys, before I tell you, I want you right now 
to see the Charles Calvin Rogers nursing home that is going to be right on this place right here and it's going to be doing so much good for so many that deserve it so much it's unbelievable so give that family and all yourselves an incredible round of applause so for charles calvin rogers god bless you in every way what a man what an incredible man So, Mr. Secretary, you can come on up. We've got incredible, incredible shovels here. And uh, we'll break ground to something that is really, really, really dear to all of our hearts, I'm sure, but really dear to my heart. God bless each and every one of you for helping pull the rope make it, and making this happen. Well, will the following people please come up and take your shovel? Delegate Todd Kirby. Director Drexel. Delegate Roy Cooper. Delegate Brandon Steele. Senator Roland Roberts. <laughs> Commissioner Leonard. <laughs> Mitch Cart. Secretary Mark Scott. Bill Elkins. Senator Vince Deeds. Jeff Elkins. Heather Brunton. Randy Coleman. Calvin Rogers and all these incredible people that are with us and all the people that will be here and enjoy this incredible city. God bless each and every one. One, two, three. <laughs> 